If you're looking to motivate your team, get them energized and running toward their goals like never before, there are a few key things that you want to make sure that you focus on. And we're going to talk about those key things today on this episode coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by RankUpAndLead.com. It's a free resource that I created because I've noticed there are five common mistakes that I see that leaders make that sabotage their team's growth. And so if you want to learn those five mistakes and how to avoid them so you can grow your team much faster, make sure to check out that free resource. Before becoming a coach and a trainer in the network marketing profession, I was building an organization for 28 years just like you. Now, why is that important? Because I understand what you've been through. I know what you're going through, and I know what you're going to go through. And that's why I love doing what I do now, because I want to be the person to you that I wish I would have had myself back years and years ago as I was navigating the daily struggles and challenges and roadblocks because it would have been so helpful. So today, I'm going to share with you some things that are not things that I think will work, right? They're not theory. They absolutely have worked for me many, many times over many years, and they've worked with hundreds and thousands of people that I've worked with, I've coached, and I've trained all over the world. So I know you're like, Darren, just like, let's get to it. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to break this up over a couple episodes, but we're going to go ahead and start with tip number one. All right, tip number one, set up the right expectations. Now, we're going to talk about this from a brand new person's perspective and also talk about when it comes to your existing team. Now, here's the challenge when it comes to network marketing. And to be honest with you, this is what gives us a bad reputation uh, one of the things is when you get someone started, and by the way, all of these things that I'm going to share with you, if you have been guilty of these things, congratulations, you're just like me and every other person, even if they don't admit it. <laughs> so the reason that I know not to do these things is because I did them many years ago and then I learned from them. So it's okay if we make mistakes, but we're learning from those mistakes. We're getting a little bit better every day and we continue to move forward. But when you introduce someone to your business model or your product, and you're giving them the wrong expectations going, listen, you can get in. You don't really have to do anything. It's not going to be hardly any work at all. You know, people are going to fall underneath of you. You know, people are going to just run to you, want to give them their money to join your business, to buy your product or service. You're setting them up for failure because number one, it's not honest. That's not the way this business works right? You don't get in and do nothing. That's life. And people go, well, most people that join network marketing do not succeed. That is true, right? Just like most real estate agents that go get their license, never sell a house. Most insurance agents, they get their license. They ne never sell a, an insurance policy. Most people that go to the gym, right? They quit and a lot of them, they just donate money to the gym every month because they're paying the automatic payment every month. And they, after a couple months, they never go back. But can you imagine me going to the gym and saying, hey, listen, I joined your gym a year ago and I'm still not in shape. Your gym does not work. And they're going to be, well, they're going to look up, you know, my, my history and go, Darren, you only came to the gym a couple times 12 months ago. It's not that the gym membership, it's not the gym doesn't work, it's you that are not working. Now, we look at that scenario when we go, well, that's just crazy, that's silly, Darren, why would you expect you know, to pay a gym membership, not do the work, but yet get the results? Well, isn't it the same way when someone joins your organization? And again, these are things that even if you're a leader, you know these things, it's always good to be reminded of the basics. And it's good to continue to reiterate and, and go over your, with your organization these things over and over and over again, because what happens when you continue to say the same things over and over and over again, eventually people say, I'm sick of you saying these same simple things. Then you know they're starting to get it. But what happens, it creates a rhythm and a culture to where they start to do it with or without you. So when you set them up for failure, 
and they go, man, well, it must be me. It, it, it's just not meant for me. I'm not cut out for this. This didn't happen like they told me it would happen. It puts a bad taste in their mouth and it doesn't help you. And on the other side, when you put out the vibe, you can get in, do nothing, get rich. Not only is it not true, but that's a lottery mentality looking to get something for nothing. But then you start to attract that type of person. Then you have an entire organization of people that got in, they donated the money, they went into the witness protection program, and you're like, why in the world is my organization not doing anything? Because we didn't teach them, look, this is a business. It's an investment. Even though the investment is very small compared to a franchise or traditional business, you want to treat this as if you invested that type of money. You want to have that type of mindset and hold yourself accountable. Whether you're working five hours a week or 10 hours a week, just know it's a business. A business has an emotional roller coaster attached to it. There are days you're up and you're so excited you can't sleep. And the very next day, you can be ready yourself to go into the witness protection program, right? You don't even want to talk about the company or the products or the services. Okay, That's completely normal with any business. A job is hard, right? There, it's an emotional roller coaster at a job. A business is hard. But for me, many years ago, I go, look, if both are hard, my job never has the ability, mine didn't. To, to create the lifestyle that I want for my family that I want and they deserve, and my job does not have that potential, I had to choose my heart. Going, look, it's an emotional roller coaster, but at least there's the potential. So then you're setting them up. And we used to, uh, I called this inoculate your people when they come on board, where other people would be giving them false expectations, promising them a lot of success with little to no work, where me, it would be complete opposite. I would be like, hey, look, it's an emotional roller coaster. Hey, look, you're going to work harder in the beginning than you get paid. When you go to work, you're exchanging time for money, right? That's a job. Here, you're going to work harder than you get paid in the beginning to have the potential to get paid a lot more than you're doing down the road. Most people look for work. Wealthy people build networks. Most people exchange time for money. Robert Kiyosaki talks about this in Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Wealthy people develop assets that throw off cash, have money work for them. So when you're upfront with them, they'll appreciate it. When they start going through the challenges and you've taught them, hey, look, challenges are your friend. Success and failure are not separate. They're friends. They're together because you learn from your failures. The challenges and obstacles lead to elevation, right? We get paid based on the size of the problem that we can solve. So when you have these challenges, be grateful because it's helping you elevate, right, to become more. And when you become more, you get paid more. Can you see what I'm doing here? Then, then when they go out there and they start experiencing what really happens when you build any business, they know, hey, this is normal. This is a part of the process, right? They, my sponsor told me that I'm going to be writing chapters in my book. And when you go through the struggles, those challenges and, and those struggles they're what makes you relatable to other people. It, for example, you're watching this right now. You're listening to this right now on whatever platform, people from all over the world. If I said, hey, listen, I got started in, 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 in network marketing many years ago. I went straight to the top of the company. I had massive success, right? Never had rejection, never had any challenges. You would not listen to a word that I said. But what happens is when you see, yes, I was able to have a lot of success. I was, but then I share with you the story behind the story. Hey, look, did you know my first seven years I failed of the 28? Did you know I ended up on government assistance and couldn't feed my family? Did you know I'm a college dropout? Did you know I would pass out in front of five people that I knew if you wanted me to speak in front of those people? Did you know I went to the doctor for depression because I couldn't feed my family? Right? Did you know that it wasn't a fast start for me? But, we have, but when we paint that picture, that brand new person starts comparing themselves, their chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20. So you set up the right expectations for the brand new people coming on board. And you go, how does that motivate them? It motivates them in a big way because they know it's tough, it's challenging, this is normal, but it's worth it. 
and you want them to stick and stay to eventually be able to get their pay. Now, on the other side is continuing to remind your existing team of the exact same things. Hey, look, it's a business. It's a process, right? You're planting a garden. You're planting seeds. You're cultivating the ground. You're watering the seeds. Then eventually you have a harvest. That's the way it works. You continue to reinforce basic business principles because most people are used to a job. They're not used to building a business. We've been taught to go to school, get good grades, and get a good job. They don't teach us how to actually go out and build a business, which is actually kind of funny when you think about it. Gary V, I was listening to him the other day, and he goes, man, they're talking about giving an entrepreneurial degree. He's like, that's like you going to college to get a pro baseball degree. You can't just go get a pro baseball degree and start playing baseball. You've got to be able to go out there and understand what it takes to build a business, and then you've got to pay the price. You've got to go go through the process to learn certain skills and mindsets and all of those great things. But the good thing or the phenomenal thing about network marketing is for a lower investment, you can get started. And it teaches you so many phenomenal things about life and about business that can help you grow at your own pace. And one more thing when it comes to expectations with your existing team, it's reminding them, hey, look, most people are not going to see what you see. That's normal. There's a reason at age 65, 97% of the people are broke. Most people are not going to see what you see. Most people that get started are not going to do a whole lot. Most people that get started, they're going to quit. That's life. That's business. But most people are not going to have the lifestyle that you have. Most people are not willing to do what you're willing to do. And successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. And that was my motto. Like so many days, more days than not, I did not want to go out and do the activities. I wanted the results for my family. And so the vision for my future was stronger than my excuses. So that continued to push me forward every single day going, I will do today what most won't do to have tomorrow what most won't have. Okay, And that's that's a great philosophy to have. And that is almost like a pep talk to myself that I used every day just to keep me pushing forward no matter how I felt. And before we go to tip number two, let me give you one more thing when it comes to setting up the right expectations with your existing team. It's preparing them for the next season. Now, what do I mean by that? If you're building, like right now, I'm recording this during the summer months. There were many years where I would get discouraged and I would let the summer months be my excuse why I didn't do what I needed to do in my business during that time. Kids are off school. People are on vacation. Like people are distracted. It's not me. And I would let myself off the hook. But when I started sharing with my organization, hey, listen, yes, the summer months, Sometimes you have to do twice the amount of work to get a fraction of the results, but it doesn't mean the results aren't coming, right? Because when we go into fall and winter, which are some of the best times of the entire year for this profession, which by the way, sets you up for the beginning of the next year. If we do the things that most people aren't willing to do during the summer months, we don't lose all our momentum. Matter of fact, we gain market share And when the kids get back in school, when vacations are starting to end, right, we're going to already be at a a really good pace. We're going to have traction. We're going to have all these seeds that are planted. Then we're watering those seeds. And then people are going to wonder what the heck did we do? What we were willing to do during the summer months, what most weren't willing to do. And then they couldn't catch us in the fall and the winter seasons. And so then you have the holidays. Then you have the beginning of the year. So as you're always preparing them for the next season and helping them have the right expectations, but also the right mindset, which allows them to continue to push through and do the activity, having faith that that if they continue to do the right activities, the results will come. Number two, you want to be able to paint a picture of what's possible. You want to be able to have a vision and be able to communicate and share that with your organization. Vision is a mental picture. It gives you focus. And when you have clarity, not only does that give you focus, but that gives you energy. 
So then what that does is that guides your daily activities and it drives them through their daily activities. It gives them fuel to continue to push no matter what obstacles they face. So not only having that clarity, having that vision, painting that picture for them, but then being able to communicate that over and over and over again to keep that in front of them. And the late billionaire, Paul J. Meyer, he said it like this. He goes, you want to run out into the future and visit your dreams and then come back to where you are and look for the stepping stones that, you, that you're going to go through and you need to go through to get you to that place. So that vision is your destination. Let me share just a quick story with you. Years ago, here in Virginia, I had this small group of people and we were meeting and I said this to them. I go, look, I know where we're going and I can promise you those that lock arms with me, you will not regret it. And I go, I'm going to take a picture today of you in this room because we've been hyped so many times that when people say things like I'm getting ready to say to you, you won't believe it. But after today, you will never be able to say that you weren't in the right place at the right time ever again. And I took a picture. And by the way, we get so used to people saying that it is hypey, but I believed it and they knew I believed it. It wasn't just hype. And I go, you're the 1% that we're going to go out. We're going to build an army. We're going to build a massive, solid business here in the state of Virginia. We're going to fill the convention center. And some of the people in that room believed it. Some did not. Well, fast forward several years later, we had a kickoff for the year. And in the Richmond Convention Center, we had over 4,000 people. That was not a company event. That was my event. And I had someone that was in that room initially, and they took that before picture and put it beside the picture at the convention center. And they go, man, you know, you, you said this was going to happen. And, and I, it, it was so exciting because it happened exactly like I saw it in my head. And that's exactly what happened with Walt Disney. Walt Disney, when they opened Ep Epcot, so obviously Walt Disney was not living at that time, and one of the reporters asked a family member, man, don't you wish that Walt Disney was here to see this today? And that family member said, are you kidding me? He saw this years ago. It's you that are just now getting to see it. So you have that vision, you communicate that vision, and you continue to communicate that vision throughout your organization, knowing that that's the destination and that's going to help them stay motivated through the obstacles and the struggles. Tip number three, lead by example. A great leader understands that before we can lead an organization, we must be able to lead ourselves. And when it comes to being a great leader, your words and your actions, they should match. Because leadership is visual, just like our kids. Same thing when you're building your organization. Leadership is more about what's being caught than being taught. And I would much rather, and you tell me in the comments below if this is the same with you, I would much, much rather watch a leader than listen to one any day of the week. And as I'm coaching leaders and, and I start evaluating their business and where are they stuck and what's it going to take to go to that next level, there's a very common thread, and it happened to me earlier in my career as well. We stopped doing what we did that got us to where we are. So we go from building, like in phase one, like getting customers and getting customer getters, sharing the story, like doing all the basic things, but then we go into management mode. And then once you go into management mode, Eventually, you go into survival mode. And for years, I had on dry erase marker on my mirror, I would have to read it in the morning, which reminded me that at the end of the day, I would have to answer this question every single day. If my organization did what I did today, how much money would I have made? And there were days that I loved to answer that question. There were days that I did not like the answer to that question, right? And let me know. Just be honest with yourself. Right? You don't have to put this in the comments, but you can say, hey, that's, you know, let me know if you think this is a great point or a great question to ask yourself. How much would you have paid you for what you've done over the last 30 days, the last 60 days, the last 90 days? When you go from leading by example again into management, eventually you go into survival. So a great way to motivate your organization is they know that their leader is leading. 
right? And, and let me tell you, it is so refreshing when you're out there doing the basics yourself, when you're talking to new people and you're getting new people started, because that gives you energy. And then you have new stories to share with your organization. And we know that stories sell, facts tell, and those stories continue to motivate and inspire your organization. So make sure that you continue to lead by example. And now that you have that awareness, you can go out there and you can start to inspect what you expect. Am I leading by example? Am I setting time on a daily basis? I don't care if you have five hours a week, 10 hours a week, whatever it is, set a percentage of that time aside to go out and do the basics yourself because your organization is watching. And if they see you go into management mode, the entire organization eventually go into management mode and then you go into survival mode. Okay, so we're gonna stop right there on this episode, but you wanna make sure that you tune in for the next episode where I give you the final tips when it comes to motivating your network marketing team. Now, today we talked about the first three of seven tips when it comes to motivating your team. And by the way, seven is probably the most important and the most powerful of all the tips. So let me know out of the first three, what was your favorite so far? And we'll definitely see you on the next episode. 